Theresienstadt, May 1942. The train trip was quiet, uneventful. People seemed to keep to themselves, lost in their own thoughts and fears about the future. After a few hours, the train came to an abrupt halt. The doors were flung open, and the frightened passengers standing nearest to the doors could see the sign reading, Bohushevitsa Station. Hannah squinted in the sunlight as she and George lugged their suitcases off the train. There, at the station, they were instructed to walk the rest of the way to the Theresienstadt Fortress. It was only a few kilometers, but their suitcases were cumbersome and heavy. Should we leave some things here? Hannah and George wondered, to lighten our load? No. Everything in their suitcases was precious, the only reminders of the life they used to have. George carried one suitcase. The other one, they put on a moving cart, pushed by prisoners. Hannah and George approached the entrance to the walled fortress and joined a lineup. Everyone was wearing a yellow star, just like them. At the front of the line, a soldier asked people for their name, age, and place of birth. Boys and men were being sent in one direction, girls and women in another. Where are they going? Hannah asked George. More than anything else, she was afraid of being separated from her brother. Can I stay with you? She pleaded. Be quiet, Anna, George told his sister. Don't make a fuss. When they reached the front of the line, the soldier stared at them. Where are your parents? He demanded. They are, uh, in another, uh, camp? George stammered. We hope that here we might be reunited. The soldier wasn't interested in conversation. He wrote down their names on index cards and searched their suitcases for money and jewelry. Then he slammed the bag shut. To the left, he ordered George. To the right, he ordered Hannah. Please, can I stay with my brother? Hannah asked. Move, now, the soldier ordered. What Hannah feared most was about to happen. George gave her a quick hug. Don't worry, he said. I'll find you as soon as I can. Holding back tears, Hannah picked up her suitcase and followed the other girls to Kinderheim, children's home. L410, a large barrack for girls that was to be her home for the next two years. Terezin, July 2000. Fumiko couldn't believe it. She was very upset, with herself and with her bad luck. I've come all this way and everyone who might be able to help me is on holiday. How did I manage to pick such a bad time to come to the Terezin Museum? How could I be so stupid, she thought. What do I do now? As the hot sun beat down on her, a tear of frustration rolled down Fumiko's cheek. She decided to go back inside the museum to collect her thoughts. Maybe she could come up with a different plan. As she sat on a bench in the foyer, she heard a rustling sound. It appeared to be coming from one of the offices at the end of the hall. Fumiko tiptoed in the direction of the sound. There, in the last office on the right, she found a woman with glasses perched on the end of her nose, sorting through a huge stack of papers. Startled, the woman almost jumped out of her chair when she saw Fumiko. Who are you? she asked. What are you doing here? The museum is closed. My name is Fumiko Ishioka, she replied. I have come a long way from Japan to find out about a little girl who was here in Theresienstadt. We have her suitcase in our museum in Tokyo. Come back another day, the woman replied politely, and someone will see you. But I don't have another day, exclaimed Fumiko. My plane to Japan leaves tomorrow morning. Please, she pleaded, help me find Hannah Brady. The woman removed her glasses. She stared at the young Japanese woman and saw how anxious and determined she was. The Czech woman heaved a sigh. All right, she said. 
I can't promise anything, but I'll try to help you. My name is Ludmila.